Hello friends, welcome back to the art room with Mr. Eck. Hope you've got your mittens on, because today we're going to go play in the snow. Well, I live in Houston, we don't get a lot of snow, so we're going to make our own snow. Today we're going to be doing a really fun lesson. Uh, it's all centered around snowflakes, and we're going to be using some oil pastels, some liquid watercolors, and some salt. So that'll be very fun. Let's go ahead and get to it. I'm going to show you step by step how to make a couple of different snowflakes, and then we're going to really have fun with it. So snowflakes are interesting because every snowflake is different. Every snowflake ever created is different. So uh, really, um, as long as you understand the basics of snowflakes, then any snowflake you make is perfect. Um, because every, every single snowflake is different. Um, I'm going to get you started with a couple of examples, and then you guys will make your snowflakes, and then feel free to change these up however you want. So the most important thing about a snowflake is it has to be symmetrical. That means it's the same thing. There's a pattern that happens in a circle. Let me just show you the first example, and I think you'll understand. So first off, I'm going to start with a circle, and then I'm going to draw a line that goes up and a line that goes down. That's symmetrical because something goes up and something goes down. That means it happens on both sides. And then I'm going to go to the left and to the right. That is symmetrical. We've got something over here, something over here, over here. That means it's symmetrical. And I'm going to do one that goes up to the right and one that goes down to the left, up to the left and down to the right. So this should look kind of like a sun at this point. Then I'm just going to put two V's on every one of these lines I just made all the way around. And that will be a good looking snowflake. And it's symmetrical because it has the same thing in a pattern all the way around the circle. All right, let's do one that's very different. All right, this one I'm going to do a little bit bigger, so that it's closer. And do a line straight down, and then I'm going to do an X like that. All right, then I'm going to between every line I'm going to go up and down like this, up and down, up and down, up and down down, down, up and down. Then I'm going to bring back those V's that we did on the last one. Those work really well. And we have another snowflake. Alright, now I'm going to do something like this one. I'm going to change it up a little bit. So for my third snowflake, and you can draw as many as you want, I'm going to go up, down, let's see, and then I'm going to make an X like this. Then I'm going to add some longer lines in between all the ones I just made. Then I'm going to do two V's on the big lines. and one V on the little lines. So those are some, some basic ones. Uh, whatever you do, just do it on the opposite side of the middle and it will turn out looking good. I'm going to try one more and I'm just going to make this one up. So I've got my circle in the middle and I'm going to go up, down, left, Right, and then I'm going to do some little lines that go like an X, like that. All right, then I'm going to connect my lines like this. And I'm going to bring back our V's. And I think that looks good. All right, so once you have your uh, your paper pretty full of snowflakes, we're going to start painting. Uh, by the way, I'm using an oil pastel. This works really good, and it's also nice if you have a colored piece of paper, because otherwise, if you have a white piece of paper, it's really hard to see where you're uh, drawing. Um, if you don't have an oil pastel, a white uh, a white crayon will work okay. Pa uh, the oil pastel works better, but the white crayon works okay. Alright, now we're going to start painting. So, uh, any liquid 
water-based paints will work fine. I've got um, a blue and a purple liquid watercolor. That's what I like to use. And uh, the reason why we need to use oil pastel or crayon is because they resist water-based paint. So I can paint right on top of these and they still show up through the paint. And these little little white spe or sorry, these little paint specks here, you can get rid of those by just dropping some uh, dropping by <laughs> dabbing it with a, a napkin or a tissue. I'm just going to paint right on top of this with my blue first, and I'm going to add some purple. I'm going to rinse out the blue from my brush so I don't get blue in my purple. I'm just going to make this look like a pretty winter day middle of a snowstorm. And I've got one more surprise to add after we're done painting. And you can paint all the way to the edge of your paper if you want. I think it's kind of fun to leave a little bit of the, the blue paper showing personally. It's really up to you. Alright, while the paper is still wet, we're going to get our salt. So I've got a little salt packet here, but however you have salt is fine. In class, I'm going to have some salt for my kids to drop on here. So something cool happens when you drop salt onto wet paint. The salt absorbs the paint. I'm hoping it works with this paper. I've never tried it with this paper before. I might need to add some more paint. It makes a really cool effect when the salt absorbs the paint. I'm going to throw on some more watercolor just to make sure that we get some of that effect. Just going to blob it on. I think that's going to be pretty. I've never tried it like this before. Let's see what happens. We really need some liquid paint for those uh, for the salt to soak up. Be sure you rinse out your brush between colors. Like now I'm gonna, I, I rinse my brush out and I'm gonna add some purple. And you won't be able to see what the salt does until it dries, but it's a really cool effect. I think you're really gonna like it. Alright, we're going to let that dry, and then we'll come back and finish it up once we can see what the, the salt added. Alright. And here's our finished snowflake artwork. I think it looks really pretty. Um, if you look really close, you see the splotchiness in the background. That is what the salt caused. I gotta be honest. Usually the salt does a more dramatic effect. I've never tried it with this paper before, but I really needed blue paper so we could see the snowflakes. So I think it was worth the trade-off. To show you the difference, this is my practice when I did before the video. You see how smooth those colors are compared to the splotchy colors on this one? So I like the splotchy colors. It, to me, it, it uh, implies that there's more snow behind these snowflakes. Like these are up close and the other snowflakes are far uh, behind and they're blurry and that's why it's splotchy. That's, that's how I take it. Anyway, um, still turned out super cool. I think this is very pretty and I think this would look great hanging in the uh, living room for the holidays or perhaps on the refrigerator. So uh, I hope you guys have fun with your snowflakes and I hope you have a fantastic holiday season with lots of fun and laughter with your family and friends and I will see you guys next time in the art room.